There's a lovely lion's mane. My started plants. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Sage and Stone Homestead. My name is Heather. I've got a little bit of a hodgepodge video for you today. Some days are just like that, where I've got a lot of little things that I want to do and it's not like one big project. But first things first, I need to take this food out of the freeze dryer. You can probably hear it running. I had some tomatoes from 2022 that I needed to get out of the freezer and actually deal with. And so I made some sauce in our roaster and instead of canning it, I decided to freeze dry it and it's all done. A little bit of a bubble action on the top. And I don't normally line my trays. I know a lot of people do, but I found that a lot of stuff, especially like this, if you just twist the freeze dryer tray, like, you know, an ice cube tray, watch. The food just pops right off, like in one big sheet. So I am gonna pack these in Mylar bags. And this is a little bit more than a quart's worth of sauce right here. A lot of times I'll pack up freeze dried foods that I know I'm gonna eat within a year or so in a jar like this. I like to be able to see it, I think it's pretty. But truthfully, they're going to have a longer shelf life if I package them up properly like this. This is a Mylar bag. It's good and thick, it blocks out light, and I am gonna be putting oxygen absorbers in the bag as well. We could be eating this sauce in 25 years, and it's going to have the same nutritional value that it does right now. So I'm gonna do one tray per bag, so I need five bags. One of the downsides of freeze-dried food is that they do kind of tend to take up a lot of space depending on what you do. So I have made tomato sauce in the past where I've pulverized it in like my grinder or a food processor and put it inside jars and it does take up way less space when I do it that way. But this was quicker for me to put away and sometimes that's more important to me. And that's one of the reasons that I want to set up my grow tent for my mushrooms today. I want to reclaim some of my freeze-dried food storage space because I need it. So this space right here is gonna need a little bit more organization than what I am going to do today, but most of this is just empty boxes and I need to take that to our burn pit. You could use empty boxes to create you know, kind of like a mulch situation in the garden. I'm not gonna do that today. You will have to be kind of tedious about pulling off all the tape and labels and things and I'm just not gonna worry about it. <laughs> These are garlic corms that have fallen off of our elephant garlic. I've talked about these in videos before. These just create more elephant garlic. So maybe I'll just throw them in the garden. So what this is, it's just another one of those like smaller plastic grow tent, mini greenhouse type things. We've put them together on the channel before, but it was a while ago. The reason that I want to move the mushrooms onto this shelf with the plastic covering over it is one of the issues that I'm encountering is the space in here, especially when the freeze dryer and the heater are running full time. It's just getting to be too dry for them and I'd like to hold in a little bit more um, humidity so the mushrooms can do better. All 
put together. And let it be known that I do not suggest that you get this type of structure to function as a greenhouse like outside. This is not going to hold up very well to much wind at all. They are a little bit flimsy, but truthfully for the price, they work very, very well for indoor use. I have a couple of these that I've been using inside my greenhouse for a couple years and we'll go out and see those in just a second, but I'd like to get my mushrooms moved over. Really it's best if mushrooms have nothing but indirect sunlight. So I am going to have to cover this side of it, probably just with a sheet or something. Doesn't have to be fancy. And also, as far as mushrooms are concerned, this is not a complete setup. Really, it's awesome if you can have some kind of ventilation fan going on in there to circulate the air. Many mushrooms require some kind of air circulation to fruit well. And it'd be awesome if you had some kind of like humidifier in the bottom. These are things that I will be adding to the tent later on, but just for now, this is what I'm going to do. I have a few of the original mushroom blocks that I was sent. These are the blue-green oyster mushrooms. This one I just harvested off of a few days ago. I re-soaked the block. You can see all the nice white mycelium there. I'm waiting for a third flush of fruiting off of this block, and I don't see anything coming on this block quite yet. Here's another one of the blocks that I am trying to get a third flush off of. And let me see if you can see down into there. You see those brand new pinning mushrooms down there? There's a whole bunch of them coming in on the side. The top of this is starting to dry out a little bit. I did kind of cut a pretty big gaping hole in this, so partially my fault for sure. Can you see those tiny little mushrooms coming in? They'll get really big in no time flat. Now oyster mushrooms are a variety that does like to breathe a lot. So I am going to stick these on the bottom and then when I close this, I'm only going to close this door here part way just so these guys can breathe a little more. These black bags here are the ones that I recently grew quite a few lion's mane mushrooms out of. So I've recently made a harvest and I'm going to re-soak the blocks so we can get another harvest out of these. See, still very much active in there. Lots of mycelium. So I'm going to soak these cut side down in some water. That one's doing well too. Get another flush out of these. I had put some lion's mane mycelium inside some buckets in order to get them to colonize in here and fruit out of these holes. I did manage to get one cluster out of these holes, but my mushroom guy, Anthony, told me that I may have too many holes in this bucket and may have allowed things inside to dry out. So what I can do is just cover up some of these holes with medical tape and I need to see if I can like water this bucket and maybe have them fruit again. I'm not sure, but he'll tell me. <laughs> so this here is some of the lion's mane mushrooms that we harvested out of those bags. I freeze dried them. You can see that they're a little bit brown on the outside. They had started to dry out a little bit because these were fruiting really well through that super cold week that we had. The heater that I had running in here was kind of running constantly and just drying things out, but these are perfectly good still. And I did get another half gallon. So we've got a half gallon jar plus this, and I am gonna be making a tincture out of this. And we're gonna start that today. But here's the little cluster that came off of my bucket. I was spinning the bucket around the other day and accidentally knocked it off. So this probably could have sat on or in the bucket, on the bucket for another couple of days. But here's a lovely lion's mane of mushroom. And you can see on the back, the little tiny hole that this big old mushroom grew out of. I plan on cooking this up tonight with dinner. I'm gonna have pasta and red sauce with a little bit of ground goat. And we're gonna add this in there as well. What I'm doing for right now to store it is I just wrapped this paper towel around it and I stuck it in this Ziploc that I have not fully closed and it's been sitting in the door in my refrigerator for a couple days and we're gonna use it tonight. So before we start on that tincture, I'd like to load up some of my new varieties of mushrooms. A couple of these varieties really do better when it's warmer. So some of these are gonna stay inside. These are pink oyster mushrooms right here. We made a harvest off of those. It was a couple weeks ago and I've tried to get this to fruit again, but I had tried when it was outside in my shed. It's been cold and so these were not fruiting, but they should do okay in here. And same thing with these yellow oyster mushrooms. These guys are looking really good. They also like it warm though. So we're gonna be bringing 
this big old block out. These are Enoki's. They look really good in there. And this one, these are chestnuts right here. I have this bag of mushrooms over here that I have not cut into. These are the branched or antlered reishi mushrooms. These are mostly grown for medicinal purposes. And from what I've been told, they need to stay in this sealed bag. There is this little vent patch on the front and that's gonna vent as much as they need to, but apparently they like a lot of CO2. So we just get to leave them closed and wait for them to grow. They probably don't need to go in here, but there's space. So I'll put them in here. All loaded up, but the bottom left it open because as I said, the oysters like to breathe. Okay, so we've got one more new mushroom to deal with. These are the brown beech mushrooms. And from what I've been told, they don't like to fruit unless it's cold. So around 40 to 55 degrees is what I was told. So that's what it's like outside. Even though I'm outside in a t-shirt, it is a high of 47 today. It's just a nice dry 47, which is not great for mushrooms to be super dry. So in the greenhouse we go. At this point in the season, unless we're gonna get another super cold evening, I am leaving the greenhouse open, so it's not like it's really hot in here. I have moved out some of my started plants into the greenhouse. I was experiencing some issues, not with germination. I had actually started two full flats of plants. One of them was an entire flat of broccoli, and then the other one had like two thirds of it, kale, and then a little bit of red cabbage. And just like the mushrooms drying out in the shed with the heat running all the time because of the cold, the plants that I had started inside my house also really dried out. This is the first time that I have tried to start plants without a humidity dome. Does not work very well inside my house. So the ones that survived, I brought out here, actually some of this kale is really big. It probably wouldn't hurt this guy to maybe go in the ground somewhere. Starting to peek through a little bit on the bottom. But it looks like there's a spot for it right here on the end of this row. So we'll plop it in. So just like the other mushrooms, they really shouldn't have direct sunlight. So I'm gonna put it on this second shelf here with my seedlings up above and I'm gonna kind of make a little barrier for, for these guys. There we go. Nothing really fancy. We'll see how they do. How are you doing, my sweet? Should I go get the C-O-O-K-I-E-S's? Is that a yes? Okay, hold on. Stay right there. Come on, Tom. Come on, Tom. Okay, yummy. Sweet girl. Here they come. <laughs> Here they come. <laughs> Woo! All right. Goat intermission. Sounds good. You guys are gonna tear this fence down. You are. Oh, you guys are crazy. Good girl. Man, this is a bad idea. Back up my poor fence. I can't handle it. Good. All right, that's all. Okay, one more. That's it. That's it, that's it. My poor fence. That's all. Thank you. I know. Do you want yours? Huh? Someone sent you a box of cookies. Alrighty, my glasses will come out of sunglasses mode in just a second, but let's get started on this tincture. 
So these are freeze dried, like I mentioned before. And I guess using dried mushrooms for tinctures is best because some of them can have sort of an unknown water content. We're really trying to take out a lot of the constituents at first with alcohol. So the less water, the better that process is gonna work. And it's also best if we crush these up a little bit. I could use my food processor. Feeling kind of lazy today. Pickle pounder is a little bit easier to clean too. This is my first time making a mushroom tincture. First, you will extract certain properties out of the mushroom using alcohol. And then the second extraction is using boiling water. But we need to let the first part of the extraction sit for four to six weeks. So I wanna get it going. This is 190 proof Everclear. I noticed that quite a few people, I've watched a couple videos on this, when they set up their alcohol extraction, they'll put some kind of cloth over the top, but also still have a solid lid. There might be something with the alcohols coming into contact with metal or the mushrooms coming into contact with metal. I'm not quite sure. I'm just gonna repeat what they did just so I don't screw anything up. That there's a milk filter. I love them. They are really good for a lot of different uses. There. And then we're just supposed to shake this every once in a while and let it sit for four to six weeks before I do the, the water extraction. I'm not 100% sure of all of the medicinal benefits of Lion's Mane Mushroom. I just know that there are many. I do know that I have a small little tincture bottle that was sold to me by my naturopath for immune health and mental health. And that bottle was over $50. And it does have Lion's Mane and it has turkey tail and a couple others. But since I'm growing my own mushrooms at home, I figured why not try to make a little bit of my own medicine as well. I'm going to leave the information for our mushrooms mushroom guy in the description box below. You probably will also see him down in the comments. So there's our mushroom update for you guys. It's going really well. It's going so well that I ordered a whole bunch more and I'm really excited to see those fruit too.